the SPS 12. I said, the SPS 12? I says, RCA, we, that's our radar. That was the best radar we had, and I worked on that thing. He said, what do you mean you worked on it? Where's the destruction book? See, they, they got the book there. There's my name on the drawing right there. <laughs> and we did break, we were out at, we were a picket ship on the ADIS line, uh, air defense uh, independent line. We, we track every aircraft in and out of the country. If they didn't add, do certain maneuvers, we would, we would uh, scamble planes up to, to intercept them. This is in the 50s, I guess, the, the uh, Cold War, I guess you'd call that, right? I don't, I don't think I saw any plane. Um, most of the ones we picked up were Russian planes. <laughs> I, I never heard of a Korean, I never saw a Korean plane. I wouldn't know what it would look like. <laughs> Yeah, I started in the mailroom with RCA, and a week later I got a job as a draftman in RCA, electrical drafting. And uh, although all my schooling was mechanical, but uh, uh, then they, that whole plant moved and became Morristown plant, the building over there on R River Road. And, and uh, so we were called plank owners of, of Morristown. You, know, you don't know what a plank owner is, right? <laughs> we're the first ones, like when you're on a ship, you're the first crew. Well, that, that was in Morristown, our first crew. And uh, uh, so the rest of my years ended up in Morristown. Um, but I did a lot of traveling. Wallops Island is one of them where we had. We've got about uh, seven or eight stations like Wallops Island that the trains uh, the crew to operate the uh, radars. And um, <clears throat> uh, so, uh, so the rest of my life was at Morristown now. Okay, you, uh, uh, you started in Camden? I started in Camden, yeah. Okay, and what was your first assignment? Assignment. Your yeah. first assignment. Well, it was a. I was a mail clerk, and I would take mail over to the thing. That's where I met the vice president of RCA, Mr. Case, and and uh, I met him in Morristown too. He, I was I was his mail delivery <laughs> at the time. However, I was going to Drexel at night, and I got a degree, and I became an electrical engineer. Why were you going to Drexel? Um, well, I was working as a draftsman in Morristown, and my father's a plumber who also uh, was RCA. He was a plumber in RCA in the 17 building, that same building in, where the mailroom is. And he had to get a job during the war because they said uh, my father was doing his plumbing on the outside by himself. And they said, no, you got to have a, 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 a job that's a, a a defense, national. Defense job. Right, defense type of work. So he got into RCA, and, and he was a, 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 a plumber in, in that same building there, 17 building there. So, uh, uh, what was you what you got you, you, were, you were helping your dad. Oh. One of his projects, and uh, oh, someone well. from Drexel wanted to know what you were going to do after you know you finished high school, and um, he noticed something in you and suggested you that you go to college. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Your I'll mention a name here: uh, Jake Sinnickson, an engineer at RCA Morristown. My father, we were over his house in, in, in Camden, putting in, in the copper pipe, after the war, with copper pipe replacing all the galvanized pipes in the houses. And that's what my father was working on. Even though he worked at RCA in the mornings, at night he was doing these, in the weekends he was doing these uh, other jobs. So the guy in that one house, Jake Sinnickson, uh, he come down and he started questioning me. He says, uh, oh, you just, you graduated high school? He says, what, what were your marks? I, I told him, he says, oh, that's great. He said, what college are you going to? 
uh, no, nobody had finished high school before here in, his family. <laughs> in my family. No, none of my family, older family, ever finished grammar schools. Uncles and aunts and everybody. They, so they, you started in the mailroom. Yeah. And what did your, the, the person that hired you for the mailroom, what did he tell you? Oh well, he he said that he's not hiring me because I'm a, a kid that that has to deliver mail. He says I only want somebody who's going to school at night and looking for a better job, and and I get him in the building, and that's what his Mr. Day, and uh, and that's what he did. He he got me, you know, a week after I got in there, he he sent in me for interviews. <laughs> And, and, and that's how it happened. I got an interview at, at the, the River Road plant, and, and then uh, that's the place where they, were, uh, they told me to stand on the tracks when they went on strike a, a week later. <laughs> I wasn't even in the building yet, and, and I'm going on a strike. And, uh, um, let's so see. after that? So, so Cynixon told me, go to college. Uh, and he looked at my father, and my father looked at me, and I said, what, what, what going to college? I mean, we, I, I'm, the, I'm the second one to go out of high school. My sister was the first one. Uh, what's this college stuff? Well, he happened to be a night school teacher at college, Drexel. When we went back, he, he came back with a bunch of papers for me. to. He said, sign these. So I filled them all out, and he said, now take them over to Drexel. And, and get in there. And he told my father, look, it's only $35 a, 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 a section. You don't need $35 to start. Um, and so get him started. And I did. And I went to Drexel like like 10 years. Uh, and that's where you met your wife? Robert? Well, well uh, no, at Drexel, I became the uh, student uh, uh, president. I worked my way up as a student president, and uh, then I get a letter in the mail saying, you, you engineers, because engineers we had it down the, the basement, you know, that's where the engineer was going to work. We were in a good classroom up there. We were down in the basement where all the equipment is. And, and they said, um, uh, if, if, um, they they sent me a letter saying that you 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 know derogatory remark about uh, engineers uh, you got to learn how to become uh, humans and, and it's over there you got you got to get uh, some it's different kind of things so you had to take these electives one elective was differential equations I don't know why that is. <laughs> And that's the one I took because all the other guys told me in work, he said, oh, if you're going to be an engineer, get that course. So I took that course. And, and the, the other ones were um, um, different equations. History. Hi and history was the other one. And I, I took the history class. I got up there early and I sat down and, and then, then this girl came in there and she sat down two chairs from me. Uh, Electrical engineer at Drexel at night. No, no. There's no girls in the classrooms. <laughs> what was she doing here? <laughs> but that was history. So, he, so, so I got in that thing. The other electives was astronomy, which I did take too. And uh, when she sat there, then uh, I don't know what happened. I guess I walked you out to the well, to the bus. Rita, you finished the story. I was the business major at Drexel. I had uh, spent two-year day school uh, at Drexel, and um, I got a, an associate degree. And my father wanted me go wanted me to go further. And I said, "Nope, I would like to work and earn my, a living." So I went to work, and it didn't take long to uh, to uh, realize that my father was right. You go for your education. I didn't want to leave my job. So I went to night school, and I went back to Drexel. And uh, I was at Drexel maybe a few years when I met Theodore. He, he sat down next to me. At, at, uh, actually, I sat next to him at, uh, at high history class. 
Usually I was the only girl in, in my classrooms. And he had the seat that I wanted, that I always picked. I always sat up front close to the professor because I was there for an education. I, and, I took that seat because, um, like in chemistry, when you, you're sitting in the back, you're going to sleep. <laughs> if I sit in the back in history, I certainly would be going to sleep. But so we, I said, we, met, we met in history class, <laughs> and he walked me. I don't know if you know Drexel. They have this huge court, uh, court uh, they call it the Great Court, and they have these marble steps. And he walked, he was walking me to, uh, to the front door. And when we were coming down the steps, I fell. And I claim he pushed me, and he claims <laughs> I fell for him. <laughs> and we got married about a couple of years later. Here's a bad remark now about Drexel. That was a, uh, an architectural school. The building and everything was 100% architectural. But you know, the stairway, like three feet and then five inches. Three feet, then five inches. Who can walk down those stairs without tripping? And that, and that, was, that was the bad part about it. And he says, some architect designed this? I mean, <laughs> nobody checked them? <laughs> So then you two were married, and you stayed at home yes. and raised your children. Yes. And then your career started. Talk about your career progression. Where did you go? What were the major programs you worked on? Uh, what was so important about them? In, well, the, the Doomsday Plane was one, right? That's the first satellite communications on an, ant on a, on an aircraft. Um, well, I worked on that, and I worked on the LEM program when I, I designed the, uh, uh, the, the electronic drive system of the, uh, of the rendezvous radar. And, and so all of that circuitry that, that uh, operates the radar, that was designed in Morristown. That's what I was on. And um, what, what else did I have there? No, you were, so that was on the Apollo program? That was Apollo. Okay. Yeah, that was Apollo. Yeah, and um, I, I worked on the Viking. You know, the, the satellite that went and landed on Mars, the Viking. Now I worked on that at Heightstown. I was transferred to Heightstown. They they needed somebody to to work on a satellite, and and I went there. And what year was that? And. Uh, Oh, I don't remember the dates, yeah, but sometimes. but uh, when we were finished with the job, uh, I I did pretty good over there. Those guys were wondering where I came from that I could I knew all this stuff about transistors. First of all, uh, I, when I was designing stuff, it was tubes, you know, vacuum tubes, right? But then on the moon, you could not use vacuum tubes. You had to use transistors. I had signed up for Drexel transistors, but it wouldn't be for another year before they started it. So they, so RCA had to make their own school in Camden Catholic High School. They had the first, second floor there at night. So I'm designing in the daytime, and we're learning how to design at night. And, and they, uh, they, they hired somebody to, to teach us how to do uh, uh, solid state uh, electronics. From that day on, we never work with tubes. Unless you're troubleshooting an old one, then you have to know how to do that. Like a, when I got on the ship, there was some equipment that had tubes yet. I, um, I was so staying. That, that was the RCA after hours programs? The, um, that you went to school, that was RCA that sponsored that? The, the oh yeah. Uh, for the moon program. Yeah, we, in other words, none of us, we all work with tubes. All of a sudden, you weren't allowed to have tubes. They, they were too... They uh, were going up to the moon and they, everything had to be they, miniaturized. They, would shake, they said they, they would shake and they'd break and, and uh, you, you, the filament would break and stuff like that. So you had to go semiconductor. So now I had a crash course in semiconductors. Which which was the best thing, you know? Part of part of the world in, in engineering is that your life is five years. 
if you don't go to school <laughs> and continue going if after five years, you're out of it because because that's how fast the, uh, the thing did. And, and, and so now, now RCA uh, sent me to Heistown, and I worked on a satellite, the, the Earth's orbiting satellite. That was one of them. And the other one I was working on, and uh, uh, it had a, they had a trouble on it. So they couldn't, it could have gotten to work, to work. So they called me on a Sunday, and I had to dri drive up there. I, I was already back at Morristown, but they had to drive up. And we had to troubleshoot the thing. And the, and the girl, after we finished, we got it working. We had to call uh, the people in uh, uh, the in California, which were uh, operating that vehicle. And, and uh, the secretary came around and told me to sign this paper, put my name there. There's a lot of paper, a lot of names on that. And I said, and then I, I signed it. But I didn't know what it was for. Later on, I found out that they, <clears throat> the paper was was uh, given to, uh, it was made into a ceramic chip. All those names that worked on the Viking, and they glued it on the bottom of the Viking ship that's landing on Mars. So our name is up there on Mars. Markevich. <laughs> if I had known what they were going to do, I'd have got all my kids' names in. <laughs> so, what was it like working for RCA? Oh, it's the only place I ever worked, so so I can't compare it with anybody else. But it was uh, good. I uh, I had no no criticisms at all about the. What I was doing, I I kept getting good jobs for some reason. I guess it's because I kept going to school, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't. Uh, I, and I liked I liked Drexel. The thing it was considering that you know I had to take a subway over there and and. Uh, but how did you like night. working for RCA? Oh yeah, well RCA, RCA, I liked it. What was the best thing about working for RCA? Well, I. Uh, it uh, it wasn't like a, a factory. In other words, when I first worked in in uh, Camden, it was like a factory. Right when a, when a whistle went off, everybody's leaving. <laughs> They're going to get the, some stuff in the uh, and, and push carts there to get some money from Camel Soup, you know, across the street and stuff like that. But here, uh, uh, while well, you worked in smaller groups. They always had groups, and they were doing certain designs and certain things like that, and uh, and I just uh, and it was every I never had any problems with the RCA uh, engineers, bosses, or whatever. I was offered a job at Wallops Island, right there, when I was ready to retire, and I told I told the the, the boss who was trying to hire me, and I said. I'm an engineer, and I said, "There's no way that I that I think I could talk to people and and tell them they're not doing too good." And okay, I says, "That's not my thing," so I, I refused that job and, and things like that. Everybody says, "Oh, you were crazy." I said, "Well, I'm I'm not. I I studied electronics, and that's where I that's where I went all the way." And what about then, your supervisors? How did your supervisors treat you? Oh. They did good. I mean, I always got good jobs. Uh, you know, I wondered why I was getting a lot of good jobs, but then I realized that I I performed. In other words, uh, they'd give me a job that the other guy couldn't do or something like that, and I and I got to go in there and, and figure out what the what was going on and things like that. And I was way ahead because I was studying at the uh, uh, sellout state while everybody else was still on tubes and stuff like that. Yeah. And what about your co-workers? The best bunch of guys you could ever have. We, I formed, when I got into Morristown, we formed a investment club. We had draftsmen, engineers, and anybody else, secretaries, and things. 
and and we made an investment club. Now, um, maybe we violated some law because when we when we got the Aegis system, uh, we knew all the companies that were feeding in things, and they said, "Oh, we'll buy that stock for the investment club." <laughs> Isn't there a woman who did that? I forget her Martha name. Martha Stewart. Huh? Martha, Martha Stewart. Stewart. And she went to jail. <laughs> I says, I says, don't tell anybody we're buying this thing. But meanwhile, what happened was I was on the ship, and I get a letter from RCA, from the guys from RCA. And they they, they broke up the club, and and I got they I got my money back. <laughs> I said, oh, they didn't want to keep the investment there. And so I went out and bought stock on my own when I got out of the thing, and I formed my own stock club. And so now, they, did you spend a lot of time with your co-workers outside oh, of work? Yeah, we had, uh, we, we, we had the uh, meetings for the investment club. It was called the Drafting and Engineers Investment Club. We also had uh, what they call the... Uh, um, baseball? Huh? You had baseball? The, well, well, I was on the baseball team, the RCA uh, Moorestown baseball team. One and the state club. One game, I had. Uh, <clears throat> I was a good hitter. <laughs> I, I hit a home run the first time up. Next time up, I hit another home run. Third time up, I hit another home run, and the fourth time up, they took all of the infielders and the extra fielders, and they put them all up against the wall. <laughs> and uh, so I really whacked one as hard as possible, and I only got a double. <laughs> Another friend of mine who was working at RCA had his children there, and he said, he come to Ted, he says, Ted, he says, they all want to know how to bat like you. And, and, so, and so that was the ball baseball team, and I. Do you uh, still socialize with some of your RCA coworkers? No, because I don't. I don't know where anybody is anymore. I mean, a lot, a lot of them I know that died. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm 84. I don't. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anybody that's. No, honey. You Jerry, know, like the Jerry guys in our, uh, in, in our development that with a cl Killian is still there. Killian is. Well, the, what about your development when you were working at RCA? Were there other RCA workers, co workers in that development? They were in the area because we used to carpool. I see. Yeah. And we took turns uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, driving. We took one car and had a, a, a car full of workers. Yeah. In your opinion, how did RCA change South Jersey? Well, uh, look, you go to Morristown now. Have you been there lately? I mean, we had two little buildings. Now, it's, it's, it's like 100 acres <laughs> more. It's, it, it's, uh, and Morristown was a little town, uh, like a little homey town and stuff like that. And and th th that that RCA plant there is bigger than I think Morristown. <laughs> it it grew, and uh, I I I, uh, I don't know anybody that works there now. That's the, uh, that would well, be, we you know, Beth works there. Who Beth Lockheed Martin? Oh, oh that's Beth. right. My my daughter-in-law lives there. Works, works there. there. Yeah, that, that's right. She's uh, a, she's works in the lab. She's a chemist. Well, she's a, she's the, a, she's the, But uh, they also uh, have the Aegis ship there. She, so I think RCA did a marvelous job for uh, for South Jersey. Uh, if everything yeah. had to be miniaturized, and I think they played a big part in having these computers that we take advantage uh, that we take. Um, we really don't realize uh, uh, what a remarkable thing that is. Um, now, you then went, went for, to work for Yes, I, I went back in 1984 because Maria was um, getting ready to go to college, and we had somebody had to pay the bills. And in, uh, today, the college expenses are tremendous. But um, when my daughter and my son went to school, we were able to afford it because Mommy went to work. What was it like working at RCA? 
Well, I met some very, very, very um, beautiful people. I'm still, I still have contact with them. Uh, we, we call ourselves the Lunch Bunch Group, and uh, we get together occasionally. Now, of course, now we are up in years, so we don't meet as frequently as we would like to. We were supposed to meet in January, but because of the inclement weather, we were not able to get together. And I miss that. I really would love to. We always promised we we're going to get together, those of us who live in New Jersey, but it never comes to fruition. And there's lunch bunch with all RCA. Well, oh, yes. I, we were all RCA. We used to meet at lunch, and then gradually we retired. And we, but we still kept in touch. Okay, and <clears throat> what about your supervisors? My last supervisor was excellent. I can't say too much for the one before. Mm -hmm. But my engineers that I worked with, uh, you could not ask for a better group of people. Uh, most of them were men, of course. Now, I guess the women are starting to get into the engineering uh, field. But um, smart guys. A lot of people talk about the RCA family. Yes. What does that mean to the both of you? I, um, I love the girls that I worked with. We, didn't, uh, we solved all, all family problems at lunchtime. And now when we get together, it's all medical. And what about but, you, Ted? The RCA family, what's that mean to you? Well, uh, uh, everything that we did uh, outside of my own family was, was going to RCA. We had, we had uh, uh, one of the draftsmen was a, a cook in the Navy, and uh, we formed a club called the Steak Eaters Club. We had about 20 RCA guys, big bosses and so forth, and we would cook our own steaks at Cooper River. Uh, park where we where we uh, have the uh, fireplaces, and uh, every month we would have a, a shindig there with the thing. I, I have a cartoon drawn of, of, of all the guys on that uh, thing, and that, they were all. We had bosses there, and and uh, uh, the, uh, no 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 women though. I don't know why the women, <laughs> but it was all men and. Uh, that's how I learned how to cook steak. <laughs> it, my family, w uh, when I got a job and everything, I, I took them all to a steakhouse in uh, Camden. And uh, I, I bought them all. I said, I'll buy the steaks for you. And I bought them all the uh, filet mignons right, right there. Everybody was there. Six people in my family. I'm eating, and I'm looking. Oh, the beautiful steak that I'm eating, and nobody's eating. I said, I said, what's the matter with it? Did it? My aunt says, Ted, it's it's just not cooked. I, said, <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's the level that I had to overcome that you could eat a, a red meat steak. <laughs> All right, now. Tell us about some of your recollections that you haven't mentioned so far. Give us some of your stories. What, uh, what was it like? Uh, and tell us some of the, uh, the interesting things that happened during your career. Well, uh, did I haven't hit yet? What haven't I hit yet? Well, that you met Alan Shepard? He used to, when oh, he I went met, on I, his trips, he I, met some I, of the astronauts. Yeah, I worked, uh, I worked down in uh, Virginia, right Patterson. Uh, the, uh, um, what was called LOLA, Lunar Orbiting Landing Assimilator. It was a bunch of models. They had a 20-foot ball of, of plexiglass and, and uh, with the moon uh, carved on it and stuff like that. And so every once in a while, they'd bring some uh, astronauts down. They're going to practice with that to, to show how the, uh, how the vehicle goes around. You know, they had a little back room over there, and they had the cameras going around doing what the vehicle's going to do. 
So when Alan Shepard came down, and, and uh, the, the NASA guys wouldn't let the astronauts talk to our, the, those dirty engineer workers over there. You, know, you don't want to get the astronauts over there. However, he, he, uh, uh, Shepard needed a, um, a high-fidelity speaker box. And we and we were building all this wood and stuff like that. So, so he come over to our my boss and he says, "Could you build that for me?" He says, "Yeah, okay." He says, "But it's got to fit in the airplane he's got. It's a, the jet plane." So he had to go over there and measure the cabin of the jet plane to see if he could fit it in there. And and they had the carpenters build them a, a, a box. So when I when he was leaving, I says, "Could uh, could I have your autograph?" And I, so I got his autograph. <laughs> And it was to me and Rita. <laughs> to, to Maria and me. Uh, he, uh, when, I, when I said Maria, he, he's looking at me like, oh, oh what's this? <laughs> Don't tell his wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> Were you involved at all with Apollo 13, that whole incident? Which one? The Apollo 13. 13. That's the one that uh, they, had, oh, yeah. they have a movie about that one, honey. And that's where they... Uh, they they got back safely, but they never got to their. their they never landed on them. Yes. Yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know anything different that uh, was happening uh, on that. I don't know what RCA would have been doing. With it. it wasn't. They really didn't land on the moon, right? They they they. They, um, um, they had trouble. I, I, and I they always wonder uh, about the moon. This one guy, like Collins, was going around the moon all the time, and that's what the rendezvous radar was for. We would the radar would be tracking that vehicle that's going around the moon, and then it would establish the takeoff point because the vehicle's not uh, not in view. So they had to do calculations in our rendezvous radar so that they would shoot off at the right time to meet up in the sky. That's what the rendezvous. That's what that whole theory was. And, um, uh, but the 13 didn't, didn't get to that state, so I don't, I never got involved there. Yeah. Okay, what about when the moonshot was going on, when, the, when they were actually up there? Walking around. Well. He stayed we, up all night, we were on vacation. And he oh, stayed well, up all night they, to watch them. It was the 11 o'clock at night when they first landed on the moon, right? And, and, and we were in, uh, down the shore. Ocean City, and they were all to sleep, and I was watching this on television. I said, well, how could you not watch that? <laughs> uh, but I didn't get involved with, the, with the, anything else. Like uh, the, the, the first one they showed on television. I don't know if they showed the other ones on television. Now, Rita, at this time you were home raising the children. What was it like working for an RCA engineer? Well, you know, it was really, it was really nice. Um, uh, he traveled a lot, he, uh, and he studied a lot, I'll tell you that much. And he not only worked at work, he did work uh, at, down the basement. It was work work. So he, was always, he always had his, his nose to the books, always. He was either going to school, on traveling, um, working at work, and taking us on vacations. He, he was just a hard-working uh, engineer, all round. All right, Ted. How would you sum up your whole career at RCA? I'd say I couldn't, I couldn't have done better. I, I mean, you know, having been involved in and uh, so many major things that happened yeah. uh, that I wouldn't even believe that I could get uh, that that much attention at the time because I uh, I was like a draftsman that started out and I said you know so I'm just going to do drawings or <laughs> or something like that but uh, going to night school I recommend for everybody I mean uh, you, you never have to you, you can never stop going to school that's the problem otherwise. You'll be outside looking in and, and, and uh, things. And uh, RCA had a lot of classes. In fact, we always had, for engineering, you, you, you would uh, go into the library and they'd give you a tape and they'd give you a course with a 
television. You can uh, put it in, a, in the uh, TV, and you could take courses right there in, in, in the uh, thing. They had a large library and everything. One time I used to check out a book on, uh, on uh, circuit design, and, uh, and, and I came back to the uh, girl behind the, ta behind the desk in the, the library, and I gave her this book, and I walked away, and she says, T Ted, what, what do you get me? I says, I, I'm returning the book. She says, this is not our book, because I had bought one. <laughs> But since I checked it out so much time, I sort of figured I thought they should be back in their thing. He said, no, you bought it. I said, oh, yeah, I forgot I bought it. And I don't have to check it out. <laughs> when you just think about it, it's, it's been a fun time. Oh, yeah. I, I can't think of any bad uh, well, happenings. Well, I, I just met one, one manager that... Well. It was she was she was in the secret area. When I go to pick her up, I can't get in there. So I gotta put that bell yeah. in there, and and their cameras looking at me. Identify and then yourself. she could open the door. <laughs> I says, well, now when when uh, Jack uh, took took Jack over Welsh, RCA, when he took uh, over RCA. G More G stand, G yeah, the, 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 yeah, but the, the Jack what Welsh. What was that like? And I first I was uh, concerned. You don't know what you're getting into. But um, I wish it had stayed RCA. But GE was good for us also. Um, and then um, we just continued d doing what we were doing. And it, but Jack Walsh was really good for us. Yeah, he the, he was a doer. They used to call him Neutron Jack. Neutron Jack, right? And I I told her that uh, Neutron Jack just came on board here, and he was up to your room, and and he couldn't get in <laughs> because nobody recognized him on the TV. So it's, when somebody opened the door, he could hear all that music and the blooms coming out and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just to sum up now, you started at RCA what year? 1950. 1950? And when did you retire? 93. 93. And you started? 84. And retired? At 94. Okay. I, I worked 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I worked for um, RCA, I got like 50 GE, years, yeah. and yeah. then... Um, I retired from Martin, Martin Marietta. Okay. It was a nice experience. Good. And I have no bad marks at all. Yeah. And, and, uh, and like, here's a guy. Like I said, none of my family uh, finished grammar school. My aunts and uncles and so forth. And here I uh, became a. I was the top engineer at that point. You know. Right. Now, in other words, I'm running jobs down there while I'm silent. You know, and uh, but a little story about while I'm silent too. When I when I went down there, and all of a sudden um, they had a, a a whistle going all whoop. It's a long stretch of island there, and we had an Aegis building there. And uh, so I said, "What's going on?" He says, "Oh, they're going to have a, a rocket shoot." Further down the island, they're going to shoot off a rocket. And when they do that, you're not allowed to drive on the island at all, and you can't be outdoors, and you got to watch out. And so I went up to the top story there, and we're out on the bridge of the ship, and the guard came up, and I says, w "Where's the missile?" He says, "Well, so you see that ball? You can see that thin gray uh, uh, silver." This guy, I said, oh, wow, that's like a half a mile away. I mean, he said, uh, and then all the cars went over the bridge and, and the mainland. In other words, they know the missile never goes off in time, and they're going to take the day off and go to the, 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 the Anyway, 
the, the guard says, just watch over t toward that thing. So I'm standing there, and all of a sudden, boom! And I said, what, I, what was that? I didn't see the missile. All I saw was a streak as far as the eye could see. And I said, oh, suppose it comes this way. He says, don't worry. Uh, there's a guy sitting over there in that room, and if the missile is going off in the wrong direction, he blows it up. I says, uh, I says, you idiot. I says, I don't know any man in the world that they will blow that up before it blow us up. <laughs> I mean, that was so fast, you don't know. <laughs> also, when I looked out at the ocean, when they were going to fire that rocket, uh, 50 ships out there. And I said, what's that? Oh, Russian, Russian ships. They, they have a, a, apparently they got the, the, the schedule, you know. <laughs> when the missile's going to be fired off. And uh, other than that, there was no, no ship. You never see ships out there. In that now, you mentioned a supervisor. Were you a supervisor at one point, or did you just go up the engineering ladder? They yeah. had offered him a management job well, at Wallops Island. 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 But he didn't take it because uh, he he wanted to get he liked to work as an engineer. He didn't like to have to. Uh, uh, I don't think I could uh, fire a fire guy. Fire anybody. Uh, in other words, I couldn't really uh, do what you had to do in that, that as kind a manager. Of job. I, I, that's not my not my life. Okay.